So don't include sales taxes paid on items used in your trade or business. So if you received a refund or state or local general sales tax in 2022, see refund of general sales taxes earlier. So if you if you paid for the sales tax in, on your business, you bought something for the business, then you would expect that you would expect that you might get a deduction, but you would be deducting the whole thing, including the sales tax generally, you would think, or putting it on the books as, an, as a depreciable asset, and then deducting the depreciation as applicable under the depreciation schedules, all in one lump sum, because it would include the sales tax that you'd get to deduct the business expense. But if you don't get the business expense, then you can only possibly get a benefit for the portion of the purchase that was for sales tax. We talked about the whole refund situation uh, earlier, so I won't dive into that. Again, line 5B, state and local real estate taxes. So enter on line 5B, the state and local taxes you paid on real estate you own that wasn't used for business. So this is the other big one. Someone owns a home, that's the big one. You've got the mortgage interest on it, and then you've got the, the sales tax related to, to it as well. So remember that the state sales tax, I mean, the state taxes uh, could could be, how do they, how do they, what's their normal taxes? Either they have an income tax or sales tax or both, right? And then you have the question of the deductibility of the state taxes there. And then no matter where you live, they almost certainly have a property tax. So a property tax on the home. So now we've got the home and the property tax, no matter where you live, you would think there'd be state and local property taxes so the property tax then the question is is the property tax up just a personal home in which case we're we're looking to take that property tax as a state and local tax deduction on the schedule a if it was for business use you might be able to take it on the schedule c if you use part of your home for business home use of an office or something like that then maybe you have to have a ratio of your taxes we might talk about when we get to the schedule c but you can't double dip. You can't ta you can't deduct both on the schedule C and on A or on, you know, home office deduction or whatever. So so but only if the taxes are assessed uh, uniformly at a like rate on all real property throughout the community and the proceeds are used for general community or government purposes. So you got publication 530 explains the deduction homeowners can take. So don't include the following amounts on line 5B foreign taxes you paid on real estate so no foreign taxes we're not we're not subsidizing foreign taxes here it's, so it's itemized charges for for services to sp specific property or persons for example a $20 monthly charge for house for trash collection $5 charge for every 1000 gallons of water consumed or a flat charge for mowing a lawn that had grown higher than permitted under a local ordinance so those are more like fees, it sounds to me, than kind of like taxes or you're paying for something, goods and services, than taxes. Uh, charges for the improvements that tend to increase the value of your property. For example, assessment to build a new sidewalk. So if you're paying for an assessment to build a sidewalk, then you're probably paying for, you know, an improvement in the home not being you know taxed for sales tax so the cost of property improvement is added to the basis of the property meaning you're increasing the value of the home so that when you sell the home you'll have less of a gain at the point in time you sell it and that's when you might have a tax benefit from it although the home would be most likely exempt anyways for a large portion of the game so it might not be all that beneficial to you but there it is however a charge is deductible uh if it is used only to maintain an existing public facility in service for example a charge to repair an existing sidewalk and any interest included in that charge so if your mortgage payments include your real estate taxes you can include only the amount the mortgage company actually paid to the taxing authority so when you deal with your your property taxes you might pay the property taxes directly so meaning you have a home loan, you're paying off the mortgage with the loan, and then you pay the state and locality for your property taxes directly. Sometimes they package those together so that basically your mortgage payments are going to be paying for both your mortgage and then the, the mortgage company will actually be paying off the property taxes. So that can be kind of convenient sometimes because then it's, you know, one less payment to, to not miss. <laughs> Maybe you won't miss. But 
then and then the mortgage company should give you the documentation of 1098 which should give you the information in terms of how much you paid in mortgage interest and the real estate taxes just remember not to miss that because anytime someone owns a home you would expect that they would have property taxes so if if you don't see it on the on the 1098 or whatever from then then you've got to collect other documentation for it because they, they have have to have property taxes for crying out so if you sold your home in 2022 any real estate tax charged to the buyer should be shown on your settlement statement and in box six of any form 1099 s you received so this amount is considered a refund of real estate taxes see refunds and rebates later any real estate taxes you paid at closing should be shown on your settlement settlement detected statement so that's another kind of issue in terms of when you first purchase a home or when a home is first purchased you've got this issue in terms of the who's going to handle in the in the agreement the property taxes right so, so, so then, and so it could be a little bit messy to determine, and you might have to look through the closing statement to determine the proper allocation of payments related to, to property taxes and who, who possibly could have a benefit for a deduction related to it based on the agreement for the closing statement. Caution, you must look at your real estate tax bill to decide if any deductible items charges such as those listed earlier are uh, included in the bill. So if your taxing authority or lender doesn't furnish you a copy of your real estate tax bill, ask for it. So prepayments of next year's property taxes, only taxes paid in 2022 and assessed prior to 2023 can be deducted for 2022. So notice we're kind of have a cash based system here for the most part and cash based systems are actually more manipulable than accrual based systems, but they're easier to track. So if you have the cash flow, you might say, hey, look, I earned more money this year than I'm going to earn next year for whatever reason. If that were the case, why don't I just prepay a bunch of these expenses? Why don't I just pay for my property taxes for the next 10 years this year? Because I happen to earn a lot of money this year or something. And the government doesn't want you to let you do that. So they're going to they're going to limit, you know, the amount of prepayment of the property taxes. So if you get a bright idea of I'm going to prepay stuff then you got to make sure and say am i able to prepay this uh, or is the tax code going to explicitly say which they often do no we're not going to let you prepay a massive amount of your expenses uh because it's manipulative of the of the cutoff and whatnot so state or local law determines whether and when a property tax is assessed which is generally when the taxpayer becomes liable for the property tax imposed so refunds and rebates if you received a refund or rebate in 2022 of real estate taxes you paid in 2022 reduce your deduction by the amount of the refund or rebate if you received a refund or rebate in 2022 of real estate taxes you paid in an earlier year don't reduce your deduction by this amount instead you must include the refund or rebate in income on schedule one form 1040 line 8z if you deducted the real estate taxes in the earlier year and the deduction reduced your tax so this is the same kind of concept we saw before with this with like a, the state tax refund for example if you got a benefit last year for something that you deducted and then they refunded it this year then what are you going to do are you going to go back to last year and fix the fact that you deducted something that you didn't really pay for because they refunded it to you or it would be easier and oftentimes the the way to go the way the the, the code lets you you go is to do it this year meaning if i got a benefit for it last year i'm going to include it in income uh this year so, so it has a tax burden to me this year because i included it in income because i got a tax benefit it from it last year kind of improperly because I got I got a deduction which I didn't really shouldn't really have gotten because I didn't really pay that but that's the cash base kind of problem again with this cash based system because I paid it but then I got refund